All right, at the buzzer, July Mito Life Academy Live. Gonna kick this off with a discussion about secosteroid hormone D, otherwise known as vitamin D. And yesterday um, on the drive home, I was listening to um, a podcast about vitamin D. And, uh, you know, it's a big debate right now. Uh, people get emotional about it. Uh, vitamin D supplementation, whether to do it, if it's beneficial, if it's harmful. Um, I'm in the unnecessary and harmful camp. And no matter how much I respect a mentor, whether it be uh, Mr. Morley Robbins or Ray Pete, you know, I think, and I've been there, a lot of people get uh, so, um, so enmeshed in someone's information that they just take it 100% is true. And um, I often tell people, even with my information, you know, if it doesn't jive with your experience and you try it and you don't feel good, then stop. You know, I'm not forcing you to take vitamin E or niacinamide or shilajit or whatever. But um, I would just keep in mind that sometimes with uh, protocols or supplementations, it's just the timing is off, right? So just finding, you know, that something might not work for you now, but it works for you later and always staying open to that. That's kind of what health is about. But getting back to this vitamin D topic, um, it's a really complicated one. And there's a lot of nuances. And in the pro-metabolic community, which I get lumped into, they often say that supplementing cholecalciferol, otherwise known as D3, is like thyroid or sugar, that it's going to increase your burn rate of nutrients, retinol, uh, renal potassium, magnesium, um, copper, that it's going to actually burn these up. And similarly to thyroid and sugar, it's not a bad thing. They claim that supplementing D3 increases your metabolism, and so it in increases your increases your nutrient requirements because there's cofactors there. But my argument is that they raise the bar. Um, I, I have two main issues with vitamin D. And, you know, people get emotional the last few days, you know, the, the raw primal people, you know, all about the terrain theory, saying germ theory is a myth. And I think that's funny. I brought that up in my recent podcast yesterday with Dr. Nick. And... <clears throat> I think people are just very emotional right now because, you know, they're clamping down hard on us and, you know, the powers that shouldn't be are, are tightening their grip on humanity. But uh, I think if we take a grounded approach and we look at the news like CNN or whatever, and we say, okay, what supplements or the doctors, right? What sup or, or Dr. Oz, what supplements are they pushing? And whatever you see on TV, we know it's 180, right? So on TV, they're not going to say, hey, check out the CLF protocol, check out calcification, check out lipofuscin, check out fibrosis. They are, they are feeding you those accumulations. And they're all about your omega-3s with Convid 1984. It's take your zinc, take your ascorbic acid, take your iron, take your liposomals, take your vitamin D. It's all BS and it's all 180. So why is half or three-fourths or more of the alternative health community in agreement with CNN or the doctors or Dr. Oz? You know what I'm saying? Like, shouldn't that, like that alone, like without listening to Ray Pete, without listening to Jim Stevenson Jr., without listening to Ray, with, without listening to uh, Trevor Marshall or Jim, or anyone, Morley Robbins, just that alone, shouldn't that like rattle your, your brain a little bit? Like, why are you agreeing with what they're telling you to take? 
on the, you know, on the controlled media. It should... <laughs> Don't alternative health, I mean, is it, do they think it's truth with lies or something? Like, yeah, they're wrong on the, you know, the zinc and the scorpic acid thing, but on the vitamin D thing, you know, that's, that's true because Ray Pete said, but just because Dr. Ray Pete says doesn't mean it's true. All respect to him, right? So I think we have to take a holistic view uh, of supplementation and there's, a place for extracts, uh, in my opinion, that's like vitamin K2, that's like vitamin E. You don't really need whole food sources of these things. Um, A and D, I would do whole food sources. Um, you know, things like methylene blue or, you know, niacinamide. Um, there's a time for extracts, but vitamin D is not one of those. So just to kind of end my rant here, finish it off here. Check it out. Here's the Mr. Sun. And here's UVB, ultraviolet B radiation. And that stands for seven dehydro cholesterol, right? So the cholesterol in your skin gets sulfated. And Ray Pete will say it's just from here to here. That's what he said in multiple interviews. It just goes from seven dehydro cholesterol up, skips that to D3. That's not true. They never mention this in the pro metabolic community ever, ever in any interview, any podcast that's, you know, talking about vitamin D supplementation, whether it's safe or not. They never, ever mention the elephant in the room pre D3. This is called lumisterol, lumisterol. And you make tachysterol, you make uh, toxifer, all these different compounds. It doesn't just go from sunlight to rat poison to cholecalciferol. It goes from sunlight to cholesterol to pre-D3. And check it out. It doesn't just go one arrow down. There's one left and one right. And L3 can make a ton of different molecules. So when you supplement D3, you're forcing your body a certain direction. If you get it from light or you get it from food, look at all the different directions it can go. It's not just boom, like Ray says. It's boom, 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 boom. Look at all those. Look at all those. Look at all those. Ton of things you can make. And not to mention the CYP11A1 pathway. Look at all this stuff. That's a lot of molecules, right? So the, the whole vitamin D talk, vitamin D is not just one thing. There's like 12 or 14 plus different forms of D3, and they're only testing for one, 25D. It's a very myopic, a very narrow, very limited view to talk about the, the vitamin D topic and only focus on this guy. Very limited. Look at all this. That's a lot of freaking compounds. And the scary part is, <clears throat> I'm going to pull up something else here. This is a guy that Ray Pete bags on. His name's Trevor Marshall. He's a PhD, talks a lot about autoimmunity. He started the Autoimmune Research Foundation. Genius, genius. And if you click on list of scientific papers, it'll pull up <clears throat> all of these. He's written a lot of clinical articles, right? Can't say that for a lot of other health educators that people put on a pedestal. Look at this, electrosmog and autoimmune disease. This guy's on it. He actually recommends silver embedded baseball caps, like I'm wearing a silver embedded shirt right now. And he talks about electrosmog and autoimmunity. And everyone's freaking out now about Lyme disease, Epstein-Barr. Um, just talked to someone yesterday in town. His wife's dealing with MS. You know, why is everyone sick with all these different diseases? Well, I asked him what his wife's taking. Vitamin D and zinc. So I don't, I, I think a big part of the education is for me, like what my message is becoming is that because not a lot of people are sharing this message because it's 
you're rocking the boat, that a lot of supplements are harmful. No one's really talking about that besides a handful of people. And, you know, disease is not just caused by EMFs, the jab, heavy metals, chemtrails, you know, infections. There are things that put the disease process on overdrive, and those things are called nutritional supplements that you find in your health food store. And the unfortunate fact about the health food store is they're drug pushers. They're all about profit. Your health food store doesn't care about you. That includes your health food co-op. They sell, just like a drug dealer would, whatever's popular. And that's why all of these harmful supplements that throw your health out of balance are trending. So the end caps, the things at eye level, it's all these things that are just gonna deplete your retinol, your potassium, your magnesium. You, you just, just throw your minerals off and throw your thyroid physiology off and open you up to infection. I mean, why does everyone have chronic low grade infection? You ever ask that question? Well, you know, why do we need ozone therapy? Well, why? Why do we need all these really intense cancer therapies when we're just biohacking? Like, what, what are we fighting? Well, we're fighting years and years and years of being force-fed. And when you got into alternative health, oh, I'm safe. Now I'm safe. I got out of the conventional, and now I'm on all these supplements, you know, and I'm on 5-HTP. I'm on, you know, I'm on L-tryptophan for sleep. Toxic. I'm on D3, I'm on, you know, all these supplements. It's like playing with fire. And if you're relatively healthy, you can play with fire and not get burned. But if you play with fire long enough, you will get burned. And we'll see that shortly with the LA crew, you know, the biohacking crew in Southern California that just jamming needles in their arm every day IV drips, glutathione, vitamin C push. You know, it's not natural to have to jab yourself, let alone have someone else jab you. We don't need needles to be healthy. Um, and, and whether it's, you know, ascorbic acid going in or supposedly a substance that's going to boost our immune system or make us immune to whatever, it's all a joke. And what we really need to look into is what's called the VDR receptor. And receptors are real. Uh, contrary to what you'll hear from Ray Pete and others, receptors are obviously real, and they're, 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 it, it's a really important thing. Uh, the vitamin D nuclear receptor, the VDR, affects transcription of at least 913 genes. Guess what D3 does? D3 turns off the VDR. You know what turns on the VDR? 125D, that's called active D. And that's what, th that's what D3 will actually get converted to. And, and the story is really complicated. I'd highly recommend the Facebook group, Psychosteroid Hormone D. Uh, Stephanie Jansky um, healed herself and she realized that D was part of the problem. She had this great article from 2020. What constitu constitutes D deficiency. Um, and I guess Jim wrote this, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, here it goes. Here, if you want to see it, this is the one they measure 25 D, but it goes to 125 D. And the story is complicated. And, and this is the easiest analogy I've found to understand it. Inactive D, the thing that Ray Pete and the metabolic community raves about, or storage D is the flour and active 125D is the bread. That never gets checked, except in Germany and Europe. So they figure out you're low on flour, 25D, but they start giving it to you. And it turns out you had so many loaves of bread, 125D, because you have Epstein-Barr, you have Lyme, you have a chronic infection, you have mold, whatever it is, right? Candida, and you really didn't need any flour. 
Then your body makes bread out of the flour, but the pantry is full of bread, so you put some of the new bread in the utility room, then in the living room, next in the bedrooms, and everything gets piled up. And that's what happens with D3 when you supplement it. It'll actually get stored as D3. And if you're already high in 125D because you have a chronic infection, taking supplemental D3 is just gonna bump this higher and bump this higher. And the argument that the, the repeat community makes is that um, it's all about PTH. PTH is bad. You know, Ray Pete says PTH is the primary cause of aging. Like I say, lipofuscin is the biological marker of aging. Ray Pete says that that's not true. It's purely parathyroid hormone. And as that increases, as you age, you age faster. And that's like the hallmark of aging. I wholeheartedly disagree with that. And I think that the story is much bigger um, than simply, you know, um, taking D3 supplements, lowers PTH, therefore D3 rat poison, good. That's like caveman argument, right? If we understand it properly, we'll see that um, there's more to the story with PTH. The, the thing that regulates it is multiple factors. It's not just D3. So, and, and that's similar with, with a lot of things in the body, right? There's not just one thing that regulates something else. There's multiple factors. And with PTH, there's magnesium, there's, there's many other minerals involved there that regulate it. It's not just a one-to-one -one thing. So I just wanted to give you guys some tools because navigating the maze of vitamin D can be very frustrating and confusing and convoluted. And um, I interviewed Jim Stevenson Jr. twice on my podcast. Once it was a three-way call with Morley Robbins and another with just Jim. And then Jim Stevenson was also on Extreme Health Radio. Um, and I think he's also been on some other podcasts, but I would definitely check out the Facebook group, Secrosteroid Hormone D. Check out the blog posts or the, the files Check out the pictures, check out the slides, look on YouTube, there's, check out trevormarshall.com and there's a link to his YouTube. Um, I know a lot of my um, uh, followers, fans, whatever on here it, uh, are dealing with autoimmune conditions and that's like blowing up, you know? Lyme disease is a big deal, you know, any kind of chronic infection. A lot of it's caused by this VDR thing. And, and this, this, this VDR inactivation that happens by supplementing D3. Um, and so it, it's, it's a complex <laughs> process, but to simplify it, um, cutting out vitamin D3 and not supplementing it because you got scared into it because the alternative health community said, CNN said, you know, your parents, you know, people around you are saying it's good. Just question. That's all I want to say is question and, and read these other articles, vitamin D, the alternative hypothesis. Um, look at Lumisterol. Uh, it's a fairly new, uh, you know, it's, it's still being discovered um, what Lumisterol does. And remember that compound's created just from ultraviolet light. So that's it. Uh, let's get into the Q&A here. Do you have an opinion or experience? Get a little swig of water here. Do you have an opinion or experience with plasma donation of, on iron copper compared to whole blood? General thoughts on the risk to reward ratio? That's a good question, Paul. I don't think plasma is um, necessary. Um, you know, you could try it and see how you feel. I think there's a lot of variables involved um, with mineral balance there. So if you want, you could try plasma and then you could try regular and see if you feel better uh, e either way. Um, I just tend to go for whole blood and that works for me. 
What do you know of the overall effects of sodium nitrates in meats, bacon on human health? Um, I think the liver should be able to handle it, um, whether that's oxalates, phytates, um, whatever, you know, plant toxin or any other toxin for that matter. The liver should be able to handle it. And if the liver um, has sufficient retinol, vitamin E, vitamin K, glycogen, choline, then you'll be, you'll be able to handle a lot there. Probably wouldn't eat bacon every day though. Will vitamin E in a soybean oil capsule have the same effects versus MCT? Uh, a lot of the vitamin E will go to neutralizing the soy, soybean oil. And there's a big debate about the, the base oil that vitamin E or vitamin D supplements, which I don't recommend at all, are in. And uh, a lot of people are really sensitive to MCT oil. I would say if you're one of those, then try your MCT with a meal because MCT is super antibacterial, uh, very beneficial to bad bacteria. Um, and if you still feel nauseous or upset stomach, then, you know, try olive oil. Um, soybean oil should really be the last resort. Um, if my only, if I was on like a deserted island and the only vitamin E I could take was in a base of soybean oil, I would take it because vitamin E is that important to me. Um, especially if I was eating poofas there, <laughs> but, um, yeah, try different things. You know, everyone reacts differently to different, uh, different supplements and so it's really about tuning in not taking a million things at once if you're introducing something new take it by itself and see how you feel and really just tune into that <clears throat> what kind of specific skills resources tradesmen did you need to buy build a biohackers homestead versus a normal farm property <laughs> um meeting the right people up here because i don't have you know i can't keep up with everything, podcast, academy, writing, all these things, studying, um, while building all this stuff. So I have, we have help up here. Um, but I would say just 11 years of study. And lately I've really just been taking inventory of all my stuff. Um, just kind of, uh, thinking about the whole biohacking thing. And I think it has its uses but I think um, it's, it's overdone and um, there is a way to stack things. And that's what I'm a big fan of. I'll be making a Mito Life Academy video soon on the Qi Palm. You know, there's some devices I have that people are skeptical about. My neighbor uh, was having like some upper back or neck pain uh, several months ago and he's over at the old house and I, and I put this Qi Palm, this, um, the sound device that just basically has a speaker that's pumping out inaudible waves up to his skin. He just has it there for a half hour and he's like, pain's gone. I, I like this thing. <laughs> and um, I use that when I'm laying down doing whatever. You know, if I have headphones on, I'm doing a new calm or listening to something, I'll put it on my thymus. And I was thinking about the other day how the thymus gland is really neglected. I never hear anyone talking about it. You know, the liver is talked about, the thyroid's talked about, but no one really talks about the thymus gland and that's our center of immunity. And that, that's really harmed by fasting. And um, it'll actually shrink with intermittent fasting. So a lot of our thymus, our thymus gland has taken a beating if we've done the bulletproof thing like I did or the keto thing or the OMAD thing, thymus got hammered. And so just to nourish that um, in whatever way you can um, is really beneficial. Um, but yeah, I've really been enjoying the infra, infratonic device that I learned about through Shen Blossom. Do you still eat <clears throat> plant-based meals? Have a garden? What would you recommend for folks living in SoCal who want more green things as part of the CELF protocol? Um, yeah, every meal has animal products in it. Um, 
I like um, Ray Pete's message about the uh, excess phosphate. I think that's overlooked. And that's uh, the big problem with the carnivore diet is that it has a ton of phosphorus and um, Ray in the metabolic community promote almost like a vegetarian diet with some, with, you know, some liver and some, some oysters and a little bit of meat, but not meat like with every meal or even every day and more focusing on milk and cheese um, and high quality dairy. Um, they really focus on the calcium, but I think there's something to that. Um, I think that's why, you know, some of the statistics where they say vegetarians are healthier. Um, if, you, if they're eating high quality dairy, I think it's possible. I think it's very beneficial. Um, you know, you're not getting, uh, you're getting more of a balanced, um, balanced nutritional profile coming in versus, you know, just a ribeye for every meal, <laughs> like the carnivores uh, were promoting for years. So yeah, uh, pretty much never go plant-based. Um, haven't had a vegetarian day and I can't remember how long years. Um, yes, we're going to start a garden here. We're going to do a geodesic dome. It's called uh, growing spaces. They've been around for a while and they're the most popular geodesic dome kind of kit that's sold and it's beneficial where it snows largely. So if you live somewhere where it doesn't snow, you get a standard greenhouse, whatever. If you live somewhere where it snows or where it gets into the, you know, 10 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 degrees, whatever, really cold, then the geodesic domes are amazing because um, they actually maintain temperature in the winter and keep, keep it cool in the summer and warm in the winter because of the nature of how it's built. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm still a fan of plants. You know, I think plants have been getting hit pretty hard the last few years. I was probably part of that, part of that message a little bit, but, um, I think that to build your system, which a lot of people need, it takes calories and it takes macronutrients and there's all this focus on micronutrients and, you know, sprouts and, and greens and what people miss with the greens thing, especially the greens powder thing, is that they're grown in tap water or well water with harmful fertilizer. The only green powders I feel comfortable taking are Dr. Cowan's garden. They're probably not using filtered water because it's not just one farm, it's multiple farms that they source from. Um, but it's better than say Organifi that's promoted pretty heavily or any of these mass produced big companies, green powders, super harmful to your health in my opinion and it caused calcification, mineral dysregulation, um, worse than fluoride really. And so it's really funny that we have, you know, a community of people that are all about the Berkey filter, but they're still calcifying their, not only their pineal gland, but their entire brain with green powders and celery juice, right? And it's just, it's kind of a, uh, an irony there. <laughs> so, you know, Adam Bergstrom is a really smart cookie and he's mostly vegetarian. Uh, I'm friends with a, a raw foodist fruitarian that could debate any carnivore I know under the rug on genetics and DNA and uh, evolution. So, you know, it's definitely doable. I think sugar is obviously the most important macronutrient. Um, protein is a close second, and then fat is last, but it's all context, right? So even though that sounds like a blanket statement, depending on where you're at in your healing journey in your life, you know, if you were vegan for years, maybe a bunch of saturated fat could help you out. Um, or excess protein or whatever. But usually it's about a balance and usually people do better with a, a, uh, a balanced macronutrient ratio, like equal parts, carb, protein, and fat. But that's something you have to experiment with. And uh, you know, same with supplements and timing and I get questions about all that stuff. It's a lot of experimentation to find what works for you.
So yeah, if you want more green things, eat them. I would say just be sure to take Shilajit and try to eat your own green things that you grew or wild harvested. Um, uh, you know, try to avoid Cal Organic and the big brands. Try to buy it from farmer's markets, obviously, or co-op. Um, but I wouldn't make it a huge portion of your diet. You're mainly after the fiber with greens, in my opinion. Not magnesium, because it's that's a joke. Same with coffee and orange juice. You're not going to get magnesium from it. That's a joke. Uh, I'm starting a health YouTube channel. Do I have to put a medical advice disclaimer on every video? If so, could I just put it in the description? Yep, description's fine. What are your best ways, in your opinion, to raise glutathione levels? Um, really, everything that I talk about, um, you know, superoxide dismutase, catalase, glutathione peroxidase, all of your an endogenous antioxidants, um, you'll produce those in healthy amounts if, you know, you turn off your Wi-Fi at night, maybe sleep grounded, um, eating your organ meats or just your, your beef liver at least, taking your shilajit, um, whole food vitamin C, vitamin E. These work with glutathione really well. Um, it's definitely not something you have to supplement. I, th I think that's where the whole liposomal crowd gets confused is they think, oh, I'm boosting my defenses by supplementing glutathione or colloidal silver or nano silver or whatever it is, as if we need more nanoparticles in our body, right? Now they're selling my cell liposomal supplements. Um, and something I did appreciate listening to Ray recently is that uh, he said that faster absorption is trending right now. Like people think for some reason, the faster you can absorb a supplement, the better, but it's actually the reverse. Like the slower you, you absorb a supplement, that slow timed release is better. Um, and I like, uh, the point that Adam Bergstrom made about liquid supplements and, you know, tinctures and those spray bottles are trending. And he said those are being exposed to oxygen. And so capsule products are actually better because they're protected from oxygen. Um, so there's a lot of stuff to wade through <laughs> in natural health and just a lot of myth, you know, rabbit hole upon rabbit hole and disinfo and misinfo. And it's just a quagmire of BS that you have to, you have to siphon through. is uh, raw goat milk from our dough. <clears throat> They're doing pretty well out there in the heat, keeping them hydrated with filtered water, just key for a farm, not well water. Um, let's see. Recommendations for stage one cervical cancer. Um, I would check out, well, the CLF protocol um, there's likely going to be a calcification, lipofuscin, and fibrosis component there. Turn the fan on me. It's going to be almost 100 today, so trying to not sweat my, my skin off here. Um, so, yeah, deuterium-depleted water has been um, really fascinating to me. I just... The last video of the month for the Academy was on that. And I was excited to make a video about it because in the last month and a half or so that I've been intensely researching it, listening to really boring podcasts where they're just saying the same thing over and over, asking the same stupid questions over and over again. Um, you know, blog posts were a little better, or reading articles about it. Um, I was fortunate to have a, a phone conversation with Robert Slovak a few weeks ago, who's the, the founder of Light Water and pretty much the inventor of reverse osmosis. Um, and yeah, my opinion is like everyone has a piece in, of the puzzle and no one has the whole puzzle, but some people have more of the puzzle and the people that have more of the puzzle understand that keto is not the way to go. 
They understand that glucose is the primary fuel of the cell. They understand that carbohydrate is a necessary nutrient. And that even though you get more ATP from fat than sugar, you get more CO2 from sugar than fat. And they never talk about that. You'll never hear that on a keto podcast because CO2 is a waste product, right? Wim Hof, right? Probably Wim Hof breathing, they say, probably depletes your deuterium. So <clears throat> getting back to, to stage one cervical cancer, you know, any kind of cancer could benefit from systemic enzymes. I think uh, those are incredible, uh, a suppressed therapy. Um, I don't focus on that aspect of it because I don't want to get in trouble. But they really do a number on the immune system for good, in a good way, systemic enzymes. Um, just look at systemic enzyme therapy immune system or, or systemic enzyme therapy cancer and read about it. I would use that in combination with DDW, deuterium depleted water. It doesn't have to be light water company, really expensive. It could be anything, any other company. They're all in plastic besides that one. Um, and check out Gabor Somalia, his book, Defeating Cancer with Deuterium Depleted Water. Check out the studies. Just, just search uh, Deuterium Depletion Cancer and check out the, the huge amount of clinical studies on it. Even stage three, stage four, it doesn't matter. Wipes it out. Um, you know, it's like a quick fix. Can it come back? Sure. You know, why is it coming up in the first place? I would say calcification, lipofuscin fibrosis, iron overload, the usual suspects, right? The stuff you'll never hear from the keto anti-sugar community, the fasting community, the dry fasting community especially. But if you combine kind of the info that I share with the deuterium depleted water and throw out all the keto nonsense, then you actually have a winning combo there. And I think, uh, you know, if I had that, that's what I would do. Obviously, red light therapy, um, very helpful, especially on the problem area, because that actually acts on the <clears throat> your physics in your body. It's not just the chemistry. Um, can you narrow down a cause treatment for AFib? Yeah, so atrial fibrillation, um, heart issues in general. Uh, my mom healed from uh, congestive heart failure. And um, a girl I used to date in musical theater uh, had AFib. And I've just known people over the years that had uh, arrhythmias and heart, and heart issues and, you know, um, leaky valves, et cetera. And uh, calcification is a big part. You know, when I think of the heart, um, PUFAs and iron really screw up your heart and, um, you know, what makes you an antenna to, to the Starlink and the 5G and everything else that everyone's freaking out about. Yeah, it's, it's the stuff in the jab, but more so it's the iron overload stuff in the jab. Don't worry about take your Sheila G don't sweat it. The iron overload. Yeah. The Sheila G will take care of that too, to a large degree, but the iron um, really throws off your electrical system and um, makes these fields harm you more. So, you know, that's why calcium channel blockers um, have a protective effect against EMF damage uh, because they actually stop calcium from coming into the cell, but also iron. And if you can stop both from coming in, you dramatically reduce the inflammation and you dramatically increase um, the, the electrical balance of the cell, um, redox potential, everything. So um, magnesium, vitamin E, vitamin K2. Anyone with a, with a heart issue, they're deficient in one, if not all three of those things. Everyone's deficient in K2, in my opinion, everyone. Because everyone's, you know, drank well water and tap water and spring water and took their calcium supplements and got their excess calcium in the green powders and the green juices and the greens in general their whole life. And 
um, vitamin D depletes K2 because K2 is required to activate it. And taking K2 with D is not enough because <laughs> you're just canceling. It's like taking your fish oil with vitamin E. Vitamin E is done. It's like you didn't even take it. Same thing with the K2 if you take that with D. It's like you didn't even take K2. You take K2 alone and you cut out the D and then you'll find that your calcium balance will happen because that's K2's job is to take it out of the soft tissue and put it back into the bone. So that's my main recommendation for, for AFib and heart issues. I mean, if you have AFib and you're in a city, you have a regular heartbeat, um, just know that the Wi-Fi, the, you know, forget the satellites, Elon satellites and forget you know, the cell towers and forget all that. Just the apartment complex, the city life, the Wi-Fi, everyone has six to eight, 10 devices. Um, that's slamming your torso. And that's why I like silver embedded clothing, like Trevor Marshall talks about in relation to VDR. Uh, I don't think we fully understand uh, what man-made harmful EMFs do to our system. And, you know, if you want to protect two areas, it's like, yes, your reproductive organs. So, you know, they make like women's and men's, you know, briefs, uh, a shirt or a jacket and a baseball cap or a hat or a beanie. Um, then you'll notice a huge difference, especially in your heart health with that. <clears throat> let's see here adam bergstrom posted lately that he ditched his sunglasses his eyeglasses when he healed his gallbladder any tips on how to do it um i'll have to ask him in the next show um yeah i'm not I mean, with gallbladder health, it's my understanding that going fat-free is the issue because if you don't consume any fat at all um, for like a long time, then your gallbladder is not releasing bile because bile is needed to, to digest the fat and then it just kind of atrophies. Um, and that's kind of how it self-cleanses is by excreting bile and there's iron with it and this, there's this whole thing going on. So yeah, I'll... Not too familiar though, you know, besides like the gallbladder flush, which I wouldn't recommend, but I would say just consuming more saturated than unsaturated fats. <clears throat> Any travel tips, especially if they make you go through the x-ray machine? Mike, I would say magnesium up. Uh, vitamin E protects against radiation, red light therapy, red light devices protects against radiation damage. Um, obviously whole food vitamin C protects it's oxidative stress, right? And so magnesium, vitamin E, vitamin C, whole food, not ascorbic acid. Uh, if you can in the morning before the flight, just do five or 10 minutes of red light therapy, um, on your torso mainly, or, you know, both sides front and back. And that's pretty much it. You know, um, I'll usually wear my no choice clothing when I walk through the scanner and uh, I've opted out a few times and it adds, you know, about 10 minutes what I've found. Um, so it's, it's a hassle. Um, I don't know. I, I guess I just think you can mitigate it. Some people think you can't. Um, you could walk through the scanner with your, and I did with full no choice on, and I'm just, you know, even though they're scanning me, I'm just, it's completely blocked. So I have to get patted down anyway. Um, but yeah, I haven't been flying for a while. Most of this year, the last time I flew was March. So <clears throat> is your Shilajit to C60 product? Oh, hey, Sultan, forgot to say hey back. Is your Shilajit to C60 product? I know it is not naturally occurring and has to be manufactured. So it is naturally occurring, yeah. Shilajit naturally contains C60, actually. 
carbon 60. I'm familiar with their take on water, but how good is the oro liquid gold? I would stay away from, you know, colloidal gold or nano minerals. Um, you know, silver, you know, use it as a hand sanitizer or use them topically, whatever. I wouldn't take those things internally. Just stick with Shilajit or Kintone, you know, get your ocean minerals, get your land minerals, and that's it. You don't need anything else besides those. And they're, they're a lot safer than, you know, all those products. Since February 2021, I've been getting recurring styes around the same time I started raw milk, CLF, and a pro-metabolic diet. Could it be that causing it, or is it a detox effect? Sounds like a detox effect. Um, I'd make sure that you're on enough vitamin E and niacinamide and see if that helps. Um, I've noticed an improvement in my vision from niacinamide, just like sharper. Um, and I took a lot of omegas. Remember, I used to sell algae oil, and so I was doing shots of it. Super toxic. Hey, Joe. Omar says, what is more valuable, silver, gold, or crypto? And how much of it would you invest in? Brass. None of those. Brass. Ammo. Ammunition. That's more valuable than crypto, than silver, than gold. Um, and what's more valuable than ammo? Nothing. <laughs> People say, oh, garden. Uh, come there with my, with my, you know, 308. See, you know, you still have your garden? Not if you don't have a 308 or brass or, or you know, 556 five, or, or an AR, right? So, um, yeah, that's a big reason why we got out of California. You know, not many places are free anymore in the United States, unfortunately. It's just getting to that point. But I think people's priorities are flipped. It's like you don't want your family member getting raped. You don't want them getting murdered. It's like, why don't you have protection? You can't fight someone with silver. You can't can't take someone's head off with gold, right? With crypto. It's ridiculous. So, you know, make sure you have that down first. And, you know, it's up to debate how many rounds, right? 5,000 rounds per, per gun. Uh, it's okay. 10,000, you know. It's all up to you, right? But um, I think people's priorities are off. <laughs> I think uh, we're kind of living in fantasy world. The grocery stores are supposedly always going to stay stocked. Your health food store, Amazon's going to keep flowing in. UPS drivers going to keep coming to your door. Really, right? So just just think, if people can't get gas, they can't go to the grocery store. It's going to go downhill really quick. So what good is your crypto then? What good is your gold then, your silver? Um, you know, I'd say practical stuff. Um, you know, wipes, uh, um, uh, you know, things for hunting, uh, for processing meat. Um, you know, you can buy that stuff at, at Costco sometimes. Game bags, things like that. That's way more valuable than than any currency, <clears throat> not to be dark, it's just time to yeah, not wake up, not wake up, because that's just an oversaid phrase, it's time to just get back to reality here and stop taking the psilocybin or the ayahuasca or the LSD or whatever people are taking to make them live in fantasy world. I read that black tea blocks iron, would it be good to drink that for that purpose? Um, yeah, I think black tea is a little better than green tea. Green tea has a naturally occurring fluoride, fluoride in it. Um, I think coffee is still the king for blocking iron. Uh, consume before a meal is great. Um, that's really how it works, but really any time of day is beneficial. Um, but yeah, if, if you've seen some studies that black tea is efficacious for iron inhibition, then by all means. <clears throat> Joe says, I wanted to say again how much salt has helped my eczema. That's incredible. Sometimes the solution's simple, right? 
I have EBV, I have Lyme, it's, you know, bee sting therapy, and uh, it's just more and more and more. Um, I think a lot of illness could be, you know, and it pisses people off, but it, it, a lot of it's just like you're attached to it. Like, at some level, you're not ready to heal. And that's why people go, you know, to these Sam Harris retreats, or they go to meditation retreats, or they go to plant medicine retreats, and they do all these things to work through just a lot of mental, emotional, psychological stuff to unlock the physical so the supplements can work, the detox protocols can work. I think you could do it without any of that stuff. I think you could just, just do it by sheer willpower. Just like say, okay, I'm ready to heal, like for real. Um, but I do think, you know, things like sensory deprivation floating has a really special place in my heart. Um, just absolutely has changed my, changed my life the last six months or more. Uh, yeah, about six months or so I've been doing it, uh, with the exception of the last three since I moved. Um, profound, instantaneous healing with, with, uh, with, with quieting all the senses and being weightless. So yeah, you know, healing, you know, there's a lot to healing. It's not just supplements and detox protocols and stuff. And I think that's where people might misconstrue, misconstrue my message. I always kind of emphasize, you know, community face-to-face -face interactions, you know, you know, real relationships, in-person interactions, eye contact, human contact, you know, like, um, doing what you want to do, you know, having a purpose, like knowing, you know, what you're here to do, uh, how you're going to help people. All that is a part of the healing journey. And I think if you're uh, stuck in healing, then you could be stuck in one of those other areas. <clears throat> Wanted to see if you know anything about hemoglobin. BUN to creatinine ratio, high MCH, low MPV. <sighs> Forget what MCH and MPV stand for. So many acronyms. Um, BUN to creat creatinine ratio, that's increased by EMFs um, pretty significantly. So if that ratio is really high, usually you have intense EMF exposure. Um, yeah, hemoglobin, I mean, I would look at my interviews with Morley Robbins because there's obviously an iron compo component there, um, but also a copper component. So... Um, there's almost no disease or physiological process that can't be improved with increased copper consumption. And that's contrary to everything you hear in the alternative health community with copper toxicity and zinc deficiency. That's the big meme, right? It's like you're zinc deficient, you're copper toxic. It's like, whoa, well, let's back up here. Like iron, hello, iron fortified foods, World War II started fortifying our food with ferrous iron, iron filings in our freaking cereal, honey nut Cheerios or Lucky Charms or Frosted Flakes, iron filings in our freaking cereal for years and years and years and years and years. And then we took our multi-mineral supplement with iron in it. And then we ate our, our you know fortified grains and our fortified foods with iron in it. And we drank our spring water and our well water and our tap water with iron in it. And we just iron, 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 iron. And you're copper toxic? Get, get the heck out of here. You're, you're retinol deficient. Because retinol is what activates copper. So where do you get retinol? Well, dairy, right? You get it from milk. You get it from cheese, from eggs. And you also get it from organ meats. It's really concentrated in uh, liver, in any animal liver, you know, not just ruminant, goose liver, duck liver, chicken liver, whatever you like. And yes, the pills work just the same. I think Saturi has the best because they're, uh, they're fr uh, freeze dried, not desiccated. So it's kind of like the next level. So some people say the vitamin A is not as denatured in that state. Um, but yeah, stuff to look into and remember 
the better your reticuloendothelial system is working, your iron recycling program, the better that's, the better you're recycling your iron, 99% of it every day, the less of an antenna you're going to be for Elon's, you know, low or low Earth orbit satellites <clears throat> that everyone's freaking out about. After listening to your podcast, I totally agree, and I do not take any vitamin D, zinc, ascorbic acid for the V, and especially after further research. Yes, we all need to study for ourselves. That's awesome. Thoughts on black magic, witchcraft, making people sick. Is that a real phenomenon? A family member is sick because they're apparently cursed. Yeah, I mean, there's a mass humiliation ritual going on right now. It's a mass occult ritual on the human race right now occurring. That's obvious. Humi humiliation ritual. Here, put three masks on. Put four masks on. Freaking joke. And so, yeah, <laughs> black magic's occurring. It's been occurring heavily for the last two years, especially. Um, but, you know, remember, even 9-11, you know, George... W, right, in the classroom reading to the kids, my pet goat, oh, goat, Baphomet, that's funny, right, right before a, a ritual, right, that it was planned. So, yes, obviously, you know, there's mass ones and there's small ones. Um, uh, I believe I was the target of, of that uh, about three or four years ago, pretty heavily. I mean, I had doors slamming by themselves multiple times with nothing touching them, with no wind, with all the windows shut. And so, yeah, stuff can happen like that. But um, uh, I think there was a, there was a book my, my friend David recommended years ago. It was called Psychic Self-Defense, I think. Yeah, by Dion Fortune. I've never read it, but he said it was a really good book. Um, I don't know. In my opinion, where I'm at now in my life, um, obviously having people close by you can trust and, you know, there's loyalty going both ways. That's like the best protection because if you don't have that, then you're just on your own and you're not as strong in your own as you are with someone else. Um, that said, there's also your bio field, uh, your electromagnetic field, your but your electro, your um, photonic field, all of it that constitutes your biofield, that's that must be strong, and that could be strengthened in so many ways. Red light therapy, coppers I just talked about, magnesium, you know, sunlight free if you have that, grounding especially in wet sand at the beach, or on a lake. Um, yeah, those are my thoughts there. I think if you're energetically weak like your mitochondria are not producing enough voltage then you will have a weak biofield and you will be more susceptible to stuff like that <clears throat> and remember there are human vampires that zap your biofield so sometimes people have that in their life that they need to get rid of and then you know that cursed effect will go away. Dr. Oz also recommends extremely cheap supplements. I don't listen to anything he says. He's told doctor or possibly a paid shill. Disinformation is very profitable. Yep. Yeah. And a lot of doctors are, are chiropractic doctors and they can still call themselves. Okay. okay. I think we're good. There we go. Okay. We're good. <laughs> yeah. I think it's fine. Um, I would rather go for like gelatin or bone broth for gut health, but if that hasn't worked, you know, or, um, Glycine, I think, is safer than glutamine. If you haven't tried high-dose glycine for gut health, I would try that first before you go to glutamine. What is your opinion on sulfur supplements, MSM orally, or added to baths? Does it interfere with copper absorption? Um, I think it's fine. I mean, I wouldn't take large amounts of it. I was mixing in the green MSM, which is non-petroleum-derived MSM from Shen Blossom into my orange juice for a while, and that was pretty enjoyable. Um, I think it's fine added to baths. 
Um, I think sulfur has a lot of benefits uh, for radiation detox specifically. It'll sulfate uh, radioactive compounds. Um, Mitch says, have you seen methylene blue work for mid-stage dementia? Not personally, but I've heard of it benefiting dementia. I think it can't hurt. Um, I think it's worth a try. I mean, for mid-stage dementia, I would use vitamin E, magnesium, methylene blue, you know, niacinamide and, and whole food C would really help too. Shilajit might be a little too strong, but that could be more advanced later on. Uh, awesome chart, Matt. Thank you for all the hard work in explaining this. Thank you. Yeah. And um, like I said in the last live, I'm, you know, my focus lately has been mostly deuterium and then with a, a little bit on ozone. But um, I've fallen behind since the move with, with keeping up. So I don't want to just keep regurgitating the same stuff. You know, I don't want my lives like six months or a year from now to be the same thing I'm talking about now. I want it to be constantly new and stuff. And that's part of the point of My Life Academy is sharing uh, new dots that I've connected um, and conveying that to you in hopefully an easy, digestible way. Um, but finally settling in here, finally getting it down to where I think I'll, I'll get back to, you know, um, learning every day. And, you know, Josh Rubin is funny. He always makes posts about, you know, you don't have to be go, go, go all the time. But I'm not sick, so I can be go, go, go all the time. <laughs> but for someone in a healing state, I think they get in that place where it's like every day they have to be learning, doing, and doing, doing. But um, if you're in a deep healing state, then sometimes it's good to just do nothing. And even if you're healthy, you know, one day a week, probably, you know, no technology, doing nothing just with your loved ones, that's good. Um, but I have an insatiable hunger for learning. And um, if I don't learn it, it, something new at least every day, um, then I kind of get depressed. So some of you guys might be like that too. And I think as long as we're using that, not just to you know, uh, hoard it, hoard the information and say like, Oh, I know more than everybody else, but to share it and, 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 you know, smart people like Jim or Morley or, or whoever, it's like, take the information and distill it for people. Cause that's what we need. Because right now we're in a place of information overload where there's just so much information, especially on social media with natural health. It's like, argument after argument and trolls and people and just comments and it's like forget all the drama you know forget the huge overload of information just you know take what makes sense and 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 you know small bite size amounts of info and, and integrate it in a usable way in a practical way Um, Jennifer, great questions. Even magnesium supplements cause us to excrete more copper. So surely it's a balance. Yeah. I think there's a place for, for mega dosing magnesium though. Um, especially if, you know, someone was drinking spring water, or bathing in tap water, you know, bathing water is really overlooked and, uh, we do absolutely absorb minerals through our skin and this is rarely talked about, or I guess some people just don't believe that's the case, that we have to like be soaking in it to absorb enough minerals to make a difference. But I think it's insane to think that bathing in tap water, or say even, you know, a dual KDF shower filter, filtered shower water that's still hard water, is you're not absorbing those hard minerals. That doesn't make sense to me. And those affect our health long term. And so I think, you know, a lot of people, I get messages every once in a while about Shilaji. You know, it's harmful. You know, why does it have heavy metals? You know, you should look into this study and whatever. And then same thing with magnesium. It's like, it's harmful. You know, it's not necessary. We get enough from food. 
cost imbalances. I think once you understand the problems that we're dealing with, you understand the solutions and how much to implement them. Um, for my floating, I think the transdermal delivery of magnesium is uh, the easiest, you know, whether it's magnesium chloride or a mix of magnesium chloride and sulfate. I really felt that worked for me when I did my like 50 floats at the old house. Um, and I definitely <laughs> increased my, I mean, my, my, it wasn't only the, the absence of sensory inputs, but my stress baseline went down significantly where, you know, my operating level was just so much more grounded and I could handle so much more. Um, so yeah, if you have the opportunity to do, you know, topical magnesium, then that's better. Um, and I would say try to, you know, try to buy a house or try to move somewhere where the, the water coming in is relatively low TDS. Just the worst place to be is like where I grew up, San Diego, the parts per million is like 480. That's insane. That's insane. And at that point, you're almost looking at a whole house filter plus a point of use filter. Because at that point, you want redundancy. Because that's, I mean, anything over 80 is hard water. 480, that's insane. So, um, you know, if you can move somewhere where it's on a well, good. If you can move somewhere where it's on a spring, even better. Um, and filtering that water versus municipal water is a totally different game. <clears throat> Thoughts on how to cold, cure cold approach anxiety, like for sales and dating. Um, I'd say magnesium. Um, you can look into uh, lithium orotate, um, but you know, five to 10 milligrams a day be a safe starting point. Um, you know, she legit contains lithium in small amounts, but Sometimes it could help to take a little bit of the the extract. Um, even methylene blue has like anti-anxiety effects. It's been studied. Um, so maybe a combination of all those things would be something to try. Red light also has a calming uh, effect on the entire system. How to get calcium if you don't do well with dairy. I'm trying to work in dairy again, but super slow. Um, fish bones, so you know, bone in uh, salmon, as long as you don't choke on it. Um, yeah, dairy is the best source. You know, greens, if you grow them yourself with filtered water in a greenhouse, that's ideal. Uh, Dr. Cowan's greens, if you don't have that going on. Um, you know, calcium supplements, I would avoid calcium oxide and carbonate. Um, you know, a pearl powder, it's like calcium phosphate largely. Um, and that's like a whole food calcium. That would probably be a better way to go. And um, I enjoy coating my teeth in that since I drink a good amount of coffee. I'm just aware of that and it has like a natural remineralizing whitening effect the the pearl powder i use crucial four so yeah i'd say probably pearl powder you know is the safest i try to stick with whole food supplements when possible <clears throat> thoughts on supplementing gaba i think it's fairly safe um you know if you get the new calm thing it's subscription unfortunately but i pay for like a year and they send you these little discs that are uh, transdermal GABA, these little GABA stickers you put on your wrist while you do your 20 or 30 minute or an hour long meditation thing. Um, I should probably do an Academy video on that because that is my go-to if I'm underslept. And we're all gonna be underslept at some point. And we all know that feeling when your brain hurts and you have stuff to do and you're like, this sucks. And you, you know, you reach for coffee or you do all these things, even methylene blue, all that stuff works better if you do the new calm first. And it's like 20 minutes. I'll make a video on it so I can fully describe it because I can't give a sound bite on it, but it's the real deal. Um, 
But, uh, yeah, GABA, I think, you know, before bed. Um, Natural Stacks, I think, has a decent one in it. It has L-citrulline, which can increase nitric oxide, which is not necessarily a good thing if you're under EMF exposure. But, um, you know, I think it's all in balance, so... Every time I try the desiccated oyster supplement, I get really anxious and end up get, getting really unstable emotionally. Do you think this is a healing reaction and I should try to push through it? I try half the dose. If you took four, try two. And if you do half the dose and you don't feel that, then I would stay with that dose. Um, remember, they're trace minerals. You don't need much. You know, I've popped 12, 20 oyster capsules before, and um, I think it's great. You know, here we don't have access. I would have to drive to Washington to get decent oysters. And so up here, we don't have fresh oysters for the most part. Um, clams are okay, you know, but I think desiccated beef liver and desiccated oyster are a blessing um, and very useful for a lot of people. Uh, especially that weren't raised eating these foods. Let me know if you guys want me to talk about Starlink at some point. I'm trying it out. I talked to a really smart guy up here about it for like almost two hours the other night. And uh, my Ethernet works pretty well. I just wanted to, you know, try this and see if it's better. And yeah, I could, I look pretty deeply into it. <laughs> Yes, I wondered about pushing through also your vitamin K and especially dissolve it all. Make my hands hurt really bad, but I know it's not the product. I continue to take one a day and push through. Yeah, and I always tell people, Angelia, like, um, if you want to, you know, if you want to be, you know, because it could be my product. It could. Um, you know, react it, with foods and supplements, people could react any which way. And so whether it's my vitamin E or my systemic enzymes, they can't hurt to try a different brand if you're having a reaction to mine. Um, and maybe some of my some of my MitoLife supplements will work and some of them won't, and that's completely okay. Um, I'm, I'm very for experimenting, even if I lose a customer or whatever, I don't care. I, I want you guys I want it to work for you guys and for you to find what works for you. And so um, sometimes even cheaper brands work better. So you have to try it out. Um, maybe it's the way they extract it. Maybe it's what they extract it from. There's so many variables. The excipients, which I think are, you know, there's a lot of fear about excipients. There's a lot of fear about supplements, period because I think people get jealous when people make money from supplements or something, and so they try to attack, like personal attacks, or say it's toxic or whatever. I think in the case of omega-3 algae oil, because I built a million dollar business, $1.3 million actually, with the omega-3 algae oil schizochytrium business, um, and walked away, I think I have grounds to say, because I was in that industry, that it's completely toxic and it causes cancer and diabetes, but for someone that's never like been in the industry, you have a lot of these like armchair quarterbacks, these keyboard weekend warriors that are just trolling on Instagram and they don't know what they're talking about. They've never been in the industry like I have. So they don't, they can't speak the language. They have no idea what they're saying. So, um, you know, maltodextrin, Satri has that in one of their products, the Cascara. Do I think that's a bad thing? No. Um, I don't think it's as harmful as they say. Even guar gum and xanthan gum and all these gums, try it out. You might be fine with them. You know, you never know until you try it. But I would say just don't give in to fear, um, you know, because it's it could be something that helps you. And even if there's magnesium stearate, which people are afraid of, or maltodextrin, or cellulose, or whatever it is that the next scare thing. Um, you really have to try it for yourself and see how you respond. Um, I know I respond well to all the MitoLife supplements. I woke up this morning, I took six Dissolve It All with my deuterium depleted water one-to-one, -one, and then I did 
my rectal ozone. I've been doing that like four to five days a week. Uh, and 15 minutes, ozone, gas. And uh, thanks, Charles, by the way. <laughs> Friend Charles at Crucial 4 got me onto that. And uh, pretty powerful therapy. Pretty powerful. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> Will you publish your one, five, 20 year food survival plan? <laughs> yeah, Paul, um, I plan to make more like, you know, prepping homestead. I, I just hope you guys want to see that. I don't know if people subscribe to this just for health stuff. I'd imagine a lot of you are sustainability minded. Honestly, I mean, that's where a lot of my energy has been going lately. I just got my first chainsaw, like posted the still brand, which is the best chainsaw I believe on the market or one of the best. And, um, you know, 25 inch bar. And then I, I've been getting into pressure washing, but getting into weed whacking <laughs> and all these things. I didn't, I, I just grew up raking leaves and playing video games. That was my big, my big things. <clears throat> and I never, never used a lot of power tools. And so being out here, you need to learn this stuff. Um, just bought a elect, electric lube machine for the tractor. And there's like 40 points you have to lube on the tractor, like every two or three uses or something, especially if it's dusty. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, there's a lot to learn, you know, if you want to be out of the city and more sustainable, you know, it, it's, it's a whole nother language to learn <laughs> and how to, how to operate stuff. But the main thing with food, food survival you know, people talk about gardening. <clears throat> yeah, it's okay. You know, um, you're going to get bored, you know, eating deer and eggs and milk. I would, you know, two decades on that. You get a little bored. Uh, you know, so to have seeds, to have a seed bank, to have, you know, cilantro to garnish your meat with and your eggs and whatever and the herbs are more like excitement to me, like flavors. Like, yes, there's beneficial compounds in them and you can use them medicinally and such, but they're mostly like a extra. And, and yes, the fiber is beneficial as well. Um, but I guess our kind of plan is to have, you know, a herd of goats, which we do for milk, <clears throat> a significant flock of chickens, um, you know, maybe 20 plus hens that are maybe dual purpose, but primarily for egg production. Um, and bees, which I've been getting pretty heavily into. We just have two hives, regular hives, standard hives right now, and a manual crank two frame extractor. Um, and then a garden. You know, if you have all four of those things, and you know, if you live somewhere where it doesn't snow, yeah, you can have cows. But if you live like more forest, mountain life like we're doing, then goats is the way to go. Um, you know, I think you could do sheep if you wanted to, goats or sheep. But that's pretty much it. You have milk, you have cheese, you have eggs, you have honey. Um, and then all you need is the skill to hunt. That's probably the most important one that I'm missing is the knowledge of how to skin wild animals. And ideally, you know, big game. So deer elk, moose, but primarily deer. You know, that's, I think, the most widely eaten uh, wild meat, especially in North America, is, uh, you know, venison. And uh, tastes really good if you do it right. My neighbor gave me a roadkill backstrap last year that blew my mind. It tasted like a chicken wing or something. It was incredible. So I think the food security plan, you know, Yes, having a homestead, but if you're not there yet financially or whatever, then, <clears throat> you know, the rewilding thing minus the spring water nonsense is good. And that's, you know, hunting and foraging. And, you know, being able to identify even just a few plants in your area to start and then, you know, getting a mentor and learning how to hunt and skin and process a wild animal. That's really your food security plan long term. If I took dairy digest, 
uh, dairy absorb. Will it help me digest dairy in the future or not at all? How can I digest dairy on my own again? No, it's only when you're eating it. So it won't circulate in your system for very long. Uh, the lactase enzyme. Um, so how can you digest dairy on your own? Get your pancreas working again um, to digest dairy and producing the lactase enzyme. And so that'll just be with consistent dairy consumption, um, small amounts consistently. And that might be like half a cup of milk a day, you know, with like a bite of cheese. You have to experiment with the amount, but just a small amount consistently. Because if you take days off, if you take weeks off, then you're just gonna go backwards. So you have to retrain your system to digest it and it's gonna be consistency. <clears throat> Angelia says, I work outside and I have iron overload. I'm starting on the vitamin E. If you're slowly, would coconut oil on the skin help in any way? I may have to find another job. Um, are you talking about for sun exposure, Angelia? I'm not sure what you're referring to I'd imagine it's protecting your skin from the sun um, yeah niacinamide also protects from UV damage and vitamin E those are the main ones uh, whole food vitamin C which will help to regenerate the vitamin E those three basically for Sun vitamin E vitamin C and niacinamide and if you can you know red light therapy in the morning and at night is really good like if you get sunburned or if you don't want to get sunburned, pre-dosing with red light is, is a, incredible at preventing photo damage. Ethan says, if tryptophan is toxic, what do you recommend to help with melatonin production and sleep? Um, you can take straight melatonin. Um, there, you know, that's another debate like vitamin D in the, alter, in the, in the health community, natural health community. Uh, Doris Low, L O H. If you YouTube Doris Low Melatonin, she's all about it. She thinks, you know, like even 20, 30, 40, 50 milligrams a day is safe. She takes it pretty far, but uh, she has some great info on it. And there is some evidence, there's some studies I've read, <coughs> like progesterone, to show that supplementing melatonin. Could actually increase your own production so that's possible um, the ideal way to do it is to make it and you make melatonin with um, bright light during the morning and the day so in the eyes on the skin and then at night um, an absence of that so blue light blocking glasses and then switching out your bulbs like I did here or you know wearing long sleeves or whatever um, if you can't do that, um, but you will produce melatonin yourself if you do those two things. It's a two-part equation. You can't just block blue light at night and create melatonin. You need the bright light stimulus during the day, and that'll actually do it. So, um, yeah, something you might want to try before melatonin is uh, glycine supplement or bone broth um, or homemade gummies um, or a bowl of ice cream that works for you good brand organic all that stuff with some casein so I've been experimenting with a spoon of casein powder from Saturi, and casein has been shown to um, improve deep sleep and so um, you know if you can't do any of that <laughs> Just milk and honey and see if that helps you. And if none of that helps you, then try it all and melatonin. You know, tr experiment. Try different combinations of everything. <clears throat> Did you say it was bad to take too much cacao? Is that what the baking cocoa is? I bought organic and I make cocoa every morning with honey and collagen. Yeah, I think... Um, uh, cocoa is a little more processed than cacao. Some people could do better on it. Um, raw cacao powder could be a little harsh for some people. Um, I think it's pretty high in oxalates, and I believe cocoa has that 
taken out. So I try both and see which one feels better on your gut and better on your system. Um, I think either can work. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's bad to take too much. I mean, I've, I've just, uh, it, it's been a stimulant for me at night, you know, cause theobromine is a relative of caffeine and it's a cardiovascular stimulant. And I've noticed if back in my raw vegan days, if I ate a ton of chocolate before I went to bed, I would be kind of wired and I wouldn't be able to sleep. Thoughts on black organic oxygen, fulvic humic acid powder. That is all the rage right now. Yeah, Sadie, I don't like all the variations of the Sheila Jeep products. You know, I think people are trying to reinvent the wheel and make it, you know, exciting and marketing and all that stuff. Just do the resin or the powder extract. I mean, that's what works and that's what's been shown to be safe. Um, I don't know if I have the study pulled up here. There was a study on the safety of Sheila Jeet. Um, so many bookmarks here. <laughs> it might be on the, even the product page, but yeah, I'm just concerned with the long-term effects of that. Yeah, here it is. It's uh, Sydney Stowe's 2014 Phytotherapy Research Journal, Safety and Efficacy of Shilajit. Um, yeah, so various research studies indicate that shilajit exhibits antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, adaptogenic, immunomodulatory, and anti-dyslipidemic properties. Um, shilajit enhances sper spermatogenesis, so it promotes fertility. Furthermore, human and animal data support its use as a revitalizer, enhancing physical performance and relieving fatigue with enhanced production of ATP. Key constituents in Shilaji responsible for these effects appear to be D-benzo alpha pyrones and fulvic acid and their derivatives. So yeah, the, I, I think the elementary school kindergarten perspective take on Shilaji for someone that's just getting into it you know, they might see like an Ormus Sheila G product or something is, oh, it's the fulvic acid and that's it. And so why don't we just take fulvic acid, right? But that's kind of like the ascorbic acid argument. It's like, all we need is ascorbic acid. That's the best part of vitamin C. That's the active component. That's the active part of vitamin C is, is AA, ascorbic acid. But no, Sheila G is not just fulvic acid. There's D-alpha benzo, there's, there's D-benzo alpha pyrones, there's um, all these different compounds. I think I showed you guys the book, Sheila Jeet in Perspective, in the last live. Um, there's tons of things in Sheila Jeet resin, the whole food supplement. And when we extract it, like the powder is not as good as the resin, in my opinion, because it's more refined and then less so with these other powders that people are selling now, um, you're gonna get the best whole food effect from the resin. And that's the resin jars or the tablets. Um, so that's kind of my perspective on it. And um, I think Shilajit's actually been shown to increase glutathione. So with glutathione, there's a huge mineral component. So if your minerals are balanced, then you you will be producing glutathione, and Shilajit can help with that. And um, I actually found a study the other day on Shilajit. I meant to share, and I'll probably share it in the coming week or two. Uh, I have to find my Shilajit folder here, so I can. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Um, anyway, I'll have to find it later, but it was saying that, um, 90% of Shilajit was, uh, calcium, magnesium, and potassium. And I was like, wait a minute, 90%? That's incredible. That's like, that's a lot. I thought it was maybe like 50% and then the rest trace minerals. But, you know, cause people are really concerned now 
especially in the metabolic community, about potassium, right? It's like adrenal cocktail, potassium bicarbonate. What if you can get natural potassium from shilajit? And apparently, according to the study I found, you can. Um, so yeah, it, it's an incredible mineral source. Um, it's a whole food mineral source. It's safe. And when you get more into the extracts, especially the black fulvic tinctures and stuff, just beware. I would say use that on your garden. Don't use it in your body. But remember, worm castings secrete fulvic acid. So you don't need to spend a fortune on your garden. Just do worm castings or get worms. <clears throat> I have the Pristine Hydro Revival System. I make magnesium bicarbonate with your product. If other products are taken at the same time, will the CO2 carry any of that into the cell? If other products are taken at the same time. No. Yeah, it won't increase absorption of other things. Shilajit will do that too, though. Um, just a rave for you. I have been eating much differently and I've added in several of your recommended products. For the first time in nine months, the pain in my hips is subsiding. That's awesome. That's amazing to hear. I was fasting for the mold problem, but now I know where the problem really comes from. CLF, thank you so much. I'm a little fatter, but I'm also feeling healthier, so that's okay. I've been sleeping like a baby lately for the most part with the blue blocker glasses you recommended and mouth taping. I've never slept so good. That's awesome to hear. That really lights me up. I love when you guys send me stuff like that because um, I want this to be helpful for people and it's what keeps me coming back to social media <laughs> is stories like that. Um, so that's really cool. That's great to hear. Yeah, sleep is, if you're not sleeping, life's not fun. So just to get that under control, that's where the healing really takes place. If you can get proper sleep, and sometimes you just need to get out of pain to get to sleep, which is why, you know, marijuana or cannabis is so popular right now. I notice your Shield G is from the same source as Pristine Hydro, same tablet packaging and Russian writing. Is this correct? No, it's different. Um, yeah, and we have a, a lab, a, a new lab report on the MitoLife site with my little video that I did, Instagram Live. Um, so yeah, it's different. Uh, a lot of the, the, um, resin products are from the Himalayas. Um, there's a few from Russia, but, um, I have a special source. I'm actually in it with the FDA right now. Not in a bad way, but just figuring things out. Um, because I'm the first one to bring this source to the U S I mean, just what it is. And I've been studying Sheila Jeet for, oh, maybe nine, 10 years now. And so um, I think my experience with it kind of led me to a unique sourcing where if someone's just been taking it for two or three years because they heard about it through me, they're not going to have the same kind of visceral, deep understanding of it, especially with sourcing. Um, you know, it's like water. It's like water connoisseurs, right, where they can drink some water and kind of swish it around like wine. You can get that way with supplements and uh, especially with Sheila G. GL says, you're amazing. Thank you for your help. Of course, Jennifer says, I watched your progesterone video. I had the complete opposite reaction with the progest E complex. Made me feel extremely hungry and like my blood sugar wasn't balanced. Is that excess? You could have taken too much or it could have just be, um, cause I think that's a soy, the rot or I think there's some soy in that product, I believe. Soybean oil, I think. Jennifer says, I did a high dose to start and made me extremely anxious. So I dropped down to 10 milligrams. Is it possibly due to the absorption method? Friends have also told me they even had a bad experience with the liquid drops topically. 
other brands included. Is the cream a slower or better absorption method? Yeah, I found the cream is slower for sure. Definitely compared to oral consumption because um, your, your skin, just like D3, I actually bought some D3 uh, topical, the health food store the other day to experiment with. I didn't know you could buy it that easily. And after speaking with Jim, he said it was safer. I'm like, well, you know, if Danny Roddy's raving about it and said it saved his life and saved him from severe depression, and whatever else, worth a try. You know, I think he's a smart guy. And so, um, yeah, I think gen in general, topical administration of things is a lot safer than oral consumption. Um, and yeah, own as naturals. I'm obsessed with, I use it every day. I think it's incredible. I think it's safe. Um, it is a large dose, but I think it's because it's topical. So there's only so much that'll get in, but I think one pump has like over 200 milligrams of progesterone, but don't let that scare you because I think only a fraction of that gets in. Um, and I like her cream because a lot of the, the other creams, um, the milligrams are so small that with topical, you're not going to get that much that makes it into your system. But usually after a shower, I'll do one pump of progesterone on my chest and then the DHEA from her testosterone booster, which to me just balances out the progesterone being a male. I put that on my neck and just do that once a day, sometimes twice a day if it's, you know, a busy day. And um, that's it. But I think topical progesterone is, is really, really safe. <clears throat> what is the main cause of urinary incontinence? I'm taking several supplements from your protocol. It is getting worse now, but I assume that is from cleansing. Um, hmm. Sounds like it could be mineral imbalance. Um, I would, the fans get me here, <laughs> it's drying out my throat. I would take inventory of your, your salt intake. You know, how many grams of salt are you consuming a day? Sometimes that's responsible for urinary issues. Um, usually people will go to like, was it red raspberry tea, I think? The one that I've seen. Um, I think I saw one for urinary here. Red's cranberry that people take. Yeah, red raspberry leaf. Um, you could drink that tea, but I would say mostly focus on mineral balance, you know, potassium, sodium, magnesium, um, and see if that helps with it. You might just be low in one of those. JL says they're saying I'm iron deficient. Just curious if you know what helps hot flashes and night sweats. Um, minerals, <laughs> uh, the macro minerals, especially um, magnesium would definitely be one to try. Um, grounding too. Um, pretty soon here, I'm going to be coming out with some grounding sheets. And so um, just silver embedded, uh, earthing sheets basically. Cause they changed my life. I started grounding 10 years ago and people are just starting to hear about it. And, uh, just discovering the rod that you pounded in the earth. I was doing that decade ago when I was living with my parents and, um, absolutely game changer. So if you're not grounding and you're having sleep issues or hot flashes, I would definitely look into that or night sweats because that alone can help it. Just be sure to do rod to earth direct. Um, how to help someone with gout. Um, CLF protocol, um, gelatin would help as well, but I would get them on the, the CLF protocol for sure, especially uh, systemic enzymes. Any idea for healing non-cancerous thyroid tumors? Um, deuterium depleted water would be really good. 
for that. Uh, any kind of tumor um, combined with systemic enzymes is what I would use. What are your thoughts on drinking liquids with a meal? I drink my Amish milk with almost every meal. I think it's fine. Um, you know, see if you get bloating or indigestion or something. Um, you might just want to do a small amount. If you do like, you know, a quart at once with your meal, that's probably too much. <clears throat> Have you heard of Izio Artisan Bakery Bread? <clears throat> Says it's 100% traceable, non-GMO. Eat the sourdough. How do we know if our flour is metal flake free? I wouldn't worry about it. I'd just take your shield you eat and live your life. Um, I haven't heard of that, but I would eat it. Sounds great. Uh, obviously, homemade sourdough is the best. That's how you ensure that it's the good stuff. But you have to keep it going, and it's like nourishing a child. You have to keep it, keep it going, the, the starter. Any thoughts on tribulus, toncata lee, and other tea bursting herbs? Um, I used to take tribulus. I used to make chocolate with it. Um, I never felt an effect from it ever, and I haven't seen you know definitive studies that it works on testosterone. Um, toncata lee, other uh, also called long jack, that does work. Um, I would just combine something like that or pine pollen with. Uh, nettle root extract or, or an aromatase inhibitor, but nettle root extract is really good Because if you take something that increases your testosterone you want to take an AI with it to prevent the testosterone from flipping into estrogen and There's multiple different aromatase inhibitors as I've said before even alcohol low dose is an aromatase inhibitor Smoking a cigar is an aromatase inhibitor tobacco is an aromatase inhibitor um Aspirin is an aromatase inhibitor. Uh, the stuff in orange juice, the bioflavonoids specifically, the naringenin and the apigenin are aromatase inhibitors. So there's different things that you can use. You can do it all. But um, yeah, I would say if you're taking pine pollen or something like that, you want to take it with nettle root, ideally. And if you live somewhere where you could harvest it, you know, make a day out of it. Take a loved one out there and bring a bag and bring your dish dish gloves so you don't get stung and rip them out you know sustainably don't harvest all of them harvest a small portion and tincture it you know put it in some 80 proof or 100 proof and you know a big half gallon or gallon jar and let it sit for a year and just pack it full and pour vodka and let it sit for a year and now you have your own tincture and you never have to buy nettle root you know for, for a good amount of time. Uh, best ways to lose weight. I don't have a, a far infrared sauna. Um, red light or sunlight. You know, if you don't have a red light therapy device, just get out in the sun. Um, try to make it, you know, early, like, you know, close to sunrise or sunset, like not midday sun, but outside of midday sun. Um, there's multiple aspects to weight loss. A former neurosurgeon mentor of mine used to think that weight loss, and he had a belly on him, a salmon person. He used he used to say, that, or he still says, that weight loss is a matter of fixing your mitochondria. But you know, if you don't practice what you preach, it's like okay. But that's part of it. You know, if your engines are broken and you can't generate proper ATP, then yeah, you're not gonna be able to lose weight. But there's a whole nother aspect to it, which is like parasites, heavy metals, plastics, which that's where the sauna comes in, particularly for the heavy metals and the plastics, to really just get that out, because a lot of stuff gets lodged in the tissue. Um, so I think the far infrared sauna for weight loss is you're going to be able to do a lot that you won't be able to do with food and supplements. I'm going to say that because it's not, you're not walking on a treadmill. You're not jogging. You're not even walking. You're sitting there. And when you're sitting there, you're in a parasympathetic state. And so your body's going to actually be able to, um, get rid of, of toxins. 
um, specifically the heavy metals and the plasticizers. So there is a time for, you know, detox protocols. Um, but best way to lose weight, you know, without all that stuff, without like biohacking or anything, um, would be to count your calories, you know, use a chronometer or something like that and really experiment with your macronutrients. Um, generally, uh, you know, higher carb, low fat is going to be your way to lose weight. Contrary to what you hear from the carnivore diet people, from almost everyone in the alternative health community. But high carb, low fat, you know, is the way to lose weight. And you just want to, you want to count your calories um, to make sure you're not eating too much. Um, I'm not an expert in weight loss. I'll say that up front. <laughs> Obviously, I've never been overweight, so I can't, I'm not I can't speak from experience. Um, I haven't worked with weight, you know, with clients to lose weight. I know it's a huge marketing thing and people get sucked into the keto, you know, Dr. Berg world because of that. Um, because they want to do anything to lose weight. When they use the, the bands on their stomach, they'll fast, they'll drink gross green juice, they'll, they'll ingest nasty stevia or monk fruit that's disgusting tastes horrible and people will do anything to lose weight but um i think if you just focus on the basics you know um light water magnetism filtered water lessen your emf exposure turn off your wi-fi at night make your room as dark as possible at night um just try to clean up your environment in every way um and that'll help but remember emfs harmful man-made emfs make you fat. Um, remember that artificial blue wavelength light increases uh, fat gain. Um, so uh, sleep deprivation makes you fat, right? Impaired glucose uptake, impaired glucose metabolism makes you fat. That's why niacinamide has been used for weight loss. Not niacin, niacinamide, nicotinamide, it's also called in the clinical literature, because that actually inhibits fatty acids. It lowers free fatty acids. And in doing so, it increases glucose uptake. If you could increase glucose uptake, that's when what I just said made sense, high carb, low fat. You say, what do you mean? I have insulin resistance. I can't absorb sugar. Yes, you can with niacinamide and vitamin E and you cut out the fish oil. Obviously you cut out the seed oils that everyone raves about, but more important than that is cutting out the fish oil. That's more toxic than canola. So cutting out the omega-3 supplements and the vegetable oils um, and then adding in vitamin E and niacinamide. Now you'll actually be able to utilize the sugar in honey, maple syrup, potatoes, fruits, squashes, stuff like that. <clears throat> hey, Matt, if your body makes its own cholesterol, is having saturated fats necessary? Um, that's a good question, Nathan. I think it goes back to this vitamin D story, hormone D, because there's this VDR connection, and the VDR receptor makes all of our chem chemical and biological warriors, and if that's switched off, uh, that's a problem. And so the whole process of sulfate and cholesterol with this, with the input of UV light, that could have an extreme balancing effect on the body. Remember sunlight, vitamin D, it's just 1% of the benefit of sunlight, but it's an important piece because you have lumisterol and you have tachysterol and you have supersterol and you have all these metabolites that you make. And then if the VDR is working, you're making like 900 plus warriors that can help battle infections that you've been dealing with for chronically for decades, possibly. So, you know, if someone is having immune issues, then I think, you know, cholesterol is very protective, but it's also you're giving a substrate uh, for for this whole vitamin D process to to, to work. So I know it's a convoluted way to answer it, but 
it's context. <laughs> so some people might do better with no saturated fat and some people might need it for a little bit or something. Um, Ethan says, thoughts on weed. I can't tell if it's good or another PSYOP cure, cure all. Heard that it reduces testosterone. Yeah, it is slightly estrogenic. I think, you know, estrogen is not the female hormone, it's the stress hormone. And so if you, you know, if you're doing things to counter estrogen, um, the raw carrot, vitamin E, you know, not the carrot salad, just eating it like a rabbit works because it all shoot up anyway. The raw carrot, vitamin E. Um, there's so many things you could do. I mean, nettle root, as I mentioned. Um, just search aromatase inhibitors or, or things that counter estrogen and you'll find a huge list. Um, but even just those alone, you're probably fine. Um, I think the stress lowering effect of cannabis can outweigh the increase in estrogen for a lot of people. Because for a lot of people, it's just lowering that cortisol can initiate the healing response and the parasympathetic and you get to start to heal. Um, so I think it's, you know, the big issue with cannabis is the addictive nature of it. And we know those are the wake and bake stoners, right? And I grew up in California 30 years, so I know that well. And it can be addictive, right? Just like conventional tobacco cigarettes, where it's not just tobacco, but it's menthol and all this other garbage that people get addicted to. It's the chemical, it's not the nicotine. And they're just, you know, every break they're smoking. That's You're not addicted to the tobacco, you're addicted to the chemicals in that cigarette. Same thing with cannabis in my opinion. And uh, I used to hang out around people that did dabs all day long. It's like 90 plus percent THC. Talk about burning out the brain. That's the big issue. Um, I think it's one thing at the end of the night, you know, before bed, just a little bit. It's another thing, wake and bake all day, every day, like a lot of people end up doing. The vape pens, throw those away. Those are garbage. Those are not. Tinctures, yeah, those are okay. Um, I think that the actual vaporizing, the actual flower is the way to go. It's more work, but it's the way to go. Um, and it's contextual, right? People have different addictive, you know, tendencies and stuff. And so if you're aware of that and you don't get addicted to different things, um, and you could take days off and stuff, then it's fine. But that's, that's a really contextual question. I think if someone's relatively healthy. It's probably fine. <clears throat> and even if they're not healthy, I think it can be beneficial, especially as a painkiller. Nothing compares as a painkiller. Do you really believe that if a supplement causes stress in the body, it is necessarily bad? I was at the point where homeopathics and salt water were even stressing me. I'm still going to take your products, even though dissolve it all in K2 or causing a little pain in my hand. I haven't taken it enough to see if it will diminish in time. Yeah, it totally could be a detox reaction. It's up to you whether you want to keep going or increase the dose or whatever. Uh, you know, I'm not a doctor, so I can't say. But um, yeah, I mean, those are pretty powerful. It dissolved, uh, the dissolve it all dissolves scar tissue and the K2 will redistribute calcium. And a lot of people, you know, especially from holding the cell phone, the microwave in their hand, from typing, you know, just our hands get hit writing in school. Our hands get hit pretty hard. Um, you know, carpal tunnel, you know, tennis players, obviously. Um, but it's not only the physical movement, it's the EMFs, because, you know, we're holding this 5G device in our hand uh, a lot. And a lot of people have Bluetooth on, they'll have location services on and that causes its own issues. So, um, yeah, I think to answer your question, if a supplement's causing issues short term, it could be a good thing. Um, not in the case of vitamin D, <laughs> I think it's all bad, but Angela says, do you have any ideas on microdosing? I really damaged myself taking liquid Chinese herbs 10 years ago. 
Everything stressed me after that. Heart was so stressed, I had to sleep sitting up for years. Um, before microdosing, I would look uh, for a sensory deprivation float tank if you're in the city. Usually you have one there um, for a spa that does floating. And just try to do like three in a row if you can. Uh, especially like three a week if you can. Like bam, 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 back to back in a day. You know, Day one, day two, day three, and then maybe take a break and then go again the next week. That can be very beneficial just to reset the entire nervous system. Um, that book, The Book of Floating, is incredible, going through all the different theories of why it may work. But um, it really helps rebalance the nervous system. Um, but yeah, just I would just remember stress depletes minerals um, and pretty much all of them, you know, salt, potassium, magnesium, calcium, they all go. Um, and also copper. But I think the one largely to focus on is magnesium. It's not 3000 enzymes. It's not 300 enzymes. It's 3700 enzymes. That's a lot. And that's why people feel so fatigued after going through a traumatic experience or a series of traumatic events is their magnesium shot. And if you want to quantify this, you get a magnesium RBC blood test. Um, and it's like 30 bucks. Awesome, Michael. Welcome. Where do you buy women's EMF underwear? Uh, LessEMF.com. Any idea what to do about high TPO antibodies for thyroid as a male in his late 20s? I'm taking tyrosine and shilajit as well as organ meats and desiccated thyroid so far. Um, also making your magnesium water. Never seen hydro travel kit coming in. Awesome, Michael. You're on it. Um, I'm not well versed at reading lab tests, but I would say um, I would say stop the tyrosine. I don't think that's necessary. Um, that amino acid. Um, you could try. Um, I have a post on the academy on the community page of uh, where I get my Sinomel. And uh, it's a really sad state that we're in today where um, it's really hard to get thyroid. <laughs> like they literally like remove it from, um, like I think it's illegal to sell like over the counter. Whereas you can buy testes, you can buy ovaries, you can buy liver, pancreas, heart, brain, kidneys, tripe intestines, literally lung, literally anything else, but even the desiccated thyroid supplements, the NDT, uh, uh, as, as it's called, natural desiccated thyroid, they don't have a lot of T3, and you don't even know how much is in there. And so um, I think T3 is one of those things, from my experience, where it's relatively safe, like progesterone. You know, it's something where you don't want to take, you know, multiple grains a day but the one that i have is 25 micrograms i got it from my uh, my mexican drugstore.com and as long as you have enough food coming in that's the key you don't put nitrous in your engine when there's no fuel so you have carbs proteins and fat you just had a meal you had a significant meal you feel like your blood sugar is regulated you feel good you had your salt then you take your th you don't take it fasted that is a recipe for disaster. And uh, if you have sufficient copper coming in, sufficient retinol and magnesium and all the things, and then you add thyroid, it's like vroom. Wow. Um, huge results. And uh, especially if, if, like me, you fasted for years and skipped breakfast for like five years, um, it's very beneficial. So... But yeah, remember that um, 
thyroid and retinol, uh, vitamin A, travel on the same protein. And so um, be sure that you're getting enough vitamin A. That's, that's a lot of people's issue because if they're retinol deficient, then their hormones are off, their thyroid's going to be off, their copper's going to be off, their iron's going to be off. It really throws off a lot of different things in the body just being vitamin A deficient. I was talking about face, too much sun exposure, plus I love the beach and ride motorcycles. Will small red light do until I get my sauna? I'm already doing vitamin E, whole food C. I have niacin, CRT. Yeah, I wouldn't do the niacin. Yeah, just a little red light on the face would help. Even just once or twice a day, it, it's a, the effect lasts a while. I have the 250 watt infrared bulb and the clamp light. Would you recommend I start with what is more affordable like the Gemba Red? Yep, yeah, the Gemba Red smaller light would be the way to go. Um, they have a red light bed at the tanning salon apparently, but I don't know about the EMFs run it. Yeah, I tried one, I bought one, like a red light bed. It's kind of a gimmick. Um, you really just want the stand up. They're like a thousand bucks that hang on your door generally. That's all you really need if you want, you know, just full body coverage. The red light bed's a little gimmicky. It's low intensity, and uh, it's just kind of a waste of time, in my opinion. Any helpful tips for body odor on Sheila G, but maybe detoxing? Uh, enzymes. So, um, uh, digestive enzymes, systemic enzymes. Usually, body odor is caused by an enzyme deficiency. Um, and maybe you're just uh, eating too much at once or uh, your body just can't, can't, isn't properly digesting the food. Can be caused by just too much stress. Um, but the enzymes, you know, lower your stress and add in the enzymes. <clears throat> Mike says, I always take pills like your vitamin K with food. However, I read it's bad to drink water during mealtime. Is it better to down the pills? with bone broth, with the steak. Um, yeah, yeah, I think bone broth with the steak is a really good way to go. TPO antibodies is essentially the immune system attacking the thyroid. I've heard low dose naltrexone <clears throat> can help, but don't want to resort to that. Um, have yet to take gut biota test to see if it could be something there but also have been researching anti-inflammatory steps. Yeah, the podcast I'm posting next week with Dr. Nick up in Toronto, Canada, He um, the episode was all about uh, LDI, which is a variation of LDA, uh, stands for low-dose allergens or low-dose activated immunotherapy. And there's not many clinicians practicing this, but... Um, Essentially, they're giving you a very small amount of the allergen or the thing that's causing the trigger. And then you wait like two weeks or two months and then you do another dose. So it's kind of like microdosing the thing that's giving you the issue. And they've had incredible success with various conditions. Um, so that might be something to look into especially if you're near that area um, but yeah I mean inflammation a lot of it could be caused just by these accumulations calcium iron uh, you know lipofuscin fibrosis um, this could really keep the the inflammation going so um, systemic enzymes are a natural anti-inflammatory Sadie says there's a place in Wisconsin that does that for allergies. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, there's so many therapies out there. I mean, hyperbaric oxygen, there's ozone therapy. Um, you know, if you can find a clinic that offers different therapies, I think it can't hurt. Just don't get lost. You know, try to be a little targeted with what you're doing instead of just trying a ton of different therapies and seeing what sticks. Um, you can do that. Um, but just try to find your weakest link and, and, and go, go from there. 
a lot of the time, like Joe here said, um, salt cured his eczema. A lot, a lot of the time, it's something so simple that you're overlooking, like just a little deficiency in something. Um, and if you're really deficient in something, it could just take time to, to bounce back and, and come back to balance. Drink my old coffee here. <laughs> I think I caught up on questions. Um, is there anything else I want to talk about? I think that was it. Um, should I give you guys a little teaser for Mighty Life Radio? Next week, I'm interviewing Morley Robbins for, I think, the eighth time. Um, he's really funny. We're like, you know, we, uh, we have a good relationship, but, we, you know, we'll, we'll go back and forth and text and stuff. And we have differing opinions on things, you know. He thinks that lipofuscin is an iron issue. It's not a PUFA problem. And I think it's both. Um, usually it's not just one thing. It's multiple things causing it. And that's what Dr. Nick actually said in our podcast yesterday. It's, it's usually more than one thing causing the problem. And I think that's more of a holistic way to look about it, to, to, to look at health. You know, it's not this or that, it's both. Um, and then... Um, the week after, actually, yeah, the third week of, of uh, or sorry, the second week of August, I'm really excited to interview um, an EMF expert. I could talk about EMFs all day long, <laughs> um, but this guy, Seth, is, uh, is really smart, and uh, he sells a lot of really cool EMF protection devices. Uh, a lot of meters, so we'll be talking a lot about meters and how to measure EMFs. I actually just ordered a bunch from him, even a Geiger counter. Getting more into measuring stuff, um, I ordered a, uh, a really accurate like $100 pH meter <clears throat> to measure the, the pH of water. It's a Milwaukee uh, German technology with uh, two probes that you use, and you have to calibrate it. Uh, like I said, if you guys saw the Academy video, if you're a member watching this live, I sent in our water here to get tested for deuterium content. Generally, higher elevation mountain ranges inland are going to have less deuterium content in the water. Remember, the average is 155 parts per million. And if you're, you know, 2,000 feet, 3,000 feet, probably going to be below 140 or around 140, which is, doesn't sound like a lot, but 10 parts per million or 15 is a huge difference for health and for mitochondrial function. Uh, yeah, just gonna keep diving into that, seeing whether it's BS or not. So far, uh, I feel like there's really something to it. Um, Ethan says, my wife wants to know how to start eating meat after being grossed out by it for 20 years. Yeah, a lot of it's, you know, um, uh, I don't want to say maturity, but I try to be gentle with people because I know there's like the anti-vegan movement that's that's really exploded in popularity the last three or four years. And, you know, there's, uh, that says my wife, my wife wrote that as me. Um, yeah, there's a guy on YouTube called Sferinj or something. And he like travel, he's always traveling for some reason. He like drinks blood and eats only raw meat. And he's like an autonomous guy. And uh, he'll go to vegan restaurants with a megaphone, pl blasting heavy metal and eating raw liver at a vegan restaurant. And it's kind of funny, but I think really, um, you know, the way we get to vegans and vegetarians is, uh, is through just open communication. Because, you know, bullying doesn't work. You know, bullying is a sign of immaturity um, and a sign that the person's stressed, right? They're not mitigating their stress well enough. So, um, you know, we don't want to be bullies. That's not being a good human being, especially when we're trying to help people. If you generally want to help people, then you, um, you speak with them with compassion and, uh, you know, be blunt, but be compassionate <clears throat> and, you know, don't tear them down, you know, and say, you're not really vegan. Plants aren't vegan. 
you're living a lie, blah, 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 and just going off. That's not the way to communicate to a plant-based person. Uh, how I communicate with them is that just speaking and, and uh, you know, if they're ethical, you can't do anything about it, right? Because then it gets into spiritual beliefs and you can't change that for someone. But if it's for health reasons and physical health reasons, then you can talk about human physiology and um, just how the body works and how protein works in the body and amino acids and talk about essential amino acids, uh, you know, the 20 amino acids, uh, the inflammatory amino acids, the non-inflammatory amino acids and letting them know like, hey, I'm not a carnivore. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying that steak for every meal is okay wife here i really want to start eating meat just have to just have like a mental block not sure trying to take one bite at a time thanks matt yeah i mean it's you might want to do like some like sensory deprivation floating or some type of like a psychological therapy neurofeedback can be very beneficial to get over mental blocks like that. Um, bone broth might be a good transition for you. Just once you feel what it's like to have animal protein coming in, you can't go back. Or if you do go back like me, like five times, it's for a short period of time. <clears throat> and largely for spiritual reasons. Because you realize, like I'm gonna make a video on essential amino acid tablets you could live on them. Yeah, you could be vegan. You 100% can be vegan for life. But you have to supplement protein your entire life. And these are like horse pills. They're, they're essential amino acid, the eight essential amino acids tablets developed in Spain. Your whole life, right? And, and people don't like to be relying on supplements, you know, long term from what I've seen. Um, you know, when can I get off these is, you know, kind of the thing. And I get it, right? I mean, I think low dose, you know, high dose for a short period of time than low dose. But um, yeah, I don't know. When I started eating meat, I was uh, vegetarian for five years, vegan for four years. And then I started watching YouTube videos. I think I found the raw bras, started listening to, <clears throat> they broke out of fruitarianism started interviewing different people. I started seeing arguments. And then recently, like two years ago, um, what broke the camel's back was an interview I had with Dr. Cass Ingram. And I've said it before, it's not necessarily what he said to me, but it's how he said it. And he was like, you know, if animals can eat other animals and we're an animal, then why can't we eat the animals too, you know? And obviously we're more than an animal, right? Because we see what happens when people live like animals, they get depressed and it's obviously not all that we are because we have emotions and stuff, but um, that was a good point, right? So it's like, you know, we know that when you cut out animal foods, your fertility goes down, your libido goes down, and that's because it's turning off the animal switch. And some people really like that because they're disgusted, rightly so, by pornography and that aspect of human nature is overly sexualized and stuff, which is the pure animal side of humans. But, you know, in a sacred, loyal relationship or marriage, then it's healthy and actually it's necessary. It's not only healthy, it's necessary to keep that marriage or relationship going it's absolutely necessary and so you don't just want to flip that switch off because it's going to ruin not only your physical health your fertility your libido but it's also going to ruin your relationship with your loved one because sex is an important part of being a human um, and, and creating a emotional bond with your partner so um, all that said I think factory farming is uh, abomination and um, I still struggle with eating, honestly, you know, a burger from the airport, which might be once or twice a year. Um, 
it's still a, a really big internal struggle for me with that because I just know what's going on, you know, in those CAFO farms and uh, those operations. And even with home, home farms, with homesteading, I think there's a better way to do things, right? That's why I started this with my partner up here is because the way we're slaughtering animals, it can be done better. And they say, you know, it's, oh, it's, it's carbon dioxide is not sustainable or just do a knife and, you know, the chicken's so calm and you pet it and then you slit its throat in the right spot and it just slowly goes down. It doesn't shake and everything. Guys, there's better ways to do things where, you know, it's uh, people are afraid of the future and, you know, back to tradition, right? And, and uh, you know, trad life and all that stuff, traditional I get that, right? The way that we're going with just the whole world, the way the world's going, just kind of immoral AI kind of direction. It's obviously a little sketchy, right? But I think there's certain aspects of things that we could do a lot better. And that specifically in the dispatching of animals and the, the killing of animals and CO2 just puts them to sleep. There's no bullet through the head. There's no shaking. There's no knife. There's there, there's just sleep and then death. Sleep and then death. There's zero cutting. There's zero impact. And I think that's the future. And I want to be a part of that. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to say there. I just think, you know, I guess people get macho with, with homesteading and, and, uh, you know, maybe they think it wouldn't be sustainable. Guys, we're supposedly, right, Bill Gates, Elon Musk says we're global warming, right? CO2, up the wazoo. Why don't we use that CO2 to, to, to euthanize our animals, to, right? Dry ice, even, you can make that with CO2. It's just, there's better ways to do things. And I think, um, yeah, people have different ways of going about having an adverse reaction to meat. And it, usually it's either ethical or health reasons. I don't know of any others. And I know a way to kind of tackle both. Um, but again, it's, it's not being mean for anyone that eats meat that has a vegan or vegetarian friend. Don't be mean to them. Don't put them down. You're not going to, you're just going to make it worse. And if they do change, it's, it's not going to be a good change. Uh, because they were like, they had this weird pressure on them from someone that supposedly cares about them. Right. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, I don't know. That's all I have to say there. Any advice for elevated prolactin levels? Um, all the stuff I've been talking about, um, mineral balance helps. Um, I think Danny Roddy has some good info on prolactin. If you just search Danny Roddy prolactin, I think we even talked about it in our podcast episode together. Um, yeah, I'm, I guess I'm kind of in the camp of just when you balance your minerals and um, have enough E and K2 and retinol in your mineral balance, then everything will just balance out and you don't really have to worry too much um, about you know lowering this or raising this or raising glutathione or lowering prolactin. I think it'll all balance out if you integrate all the right things together. Um, some people are just missing supplements and then some people are missing the foundation. Uh, some people are missing both. <laughs> and those are like the people that I talk to on the street that are dealing with like MS and extreme conditions that just have been taking all the wrong supplements and have been keto. Um, it still amazes me. Like every person I talk to about health on the street. Yeah. I just went sugar free. You know, it's like, Whoa. And these are like older guys, like forties, fifties. And I'm like, oh, no, I mean, it's like, I can't even, I can't break through. She's like, oh, look at this young buck. He doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, yeah, he's a supplement company. You know, he probably just read some blogs and just, you know, I'm not going to be able to get through to them on how sugar is the necessary part of life <laughs> and carbohydrate. But uh, yeah, anyway, hopefully that meat rant made sense <laughs> too. <laughs> Um, Josh Rubin's wife was, was I think, vegan or vegetarian. And he said, uh, she just had to get over it one night and just ate 
some muscle meat and just got over it and then just didn't look back. I think what you feel, when you feel what it feels like, like I said, to eat muscle meat, that strength, that it's not only strength, it's, it's like groundedness, like you're anchored when you eat red meat specifically, not chicken, not pork, not fish, specifically red meat. And that could be bison, elk, deer, it's not just beef. Don't just don't just only do beef. Try different ones. And I would say if you haven't eaten meat for a while, do bison. That is your highest choice because it's more of a wild meat, and to me, it's healthier than beef. Um, I think you get more strength out of it. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say there. So um, I think we covered it all. <laughs> Um, let me know if you want to see on the podcast as always. Um, I'm always looking for new guests. I think some people reached out to me on Instagram. I haven't got a chance to check my messages in a little bit here. Um, they like volunteered themselves to be on my podcast. Um, I'm still looking for, um, an episode to have on dental. I don't think I reached out to those dentists that you guys told me last month. Um, but I promise I will have an episode on dental health because I think it's there's not enough attention put on it. And um, to me, K2 is the important piece. It's like when people say like, yeah, supplements don't work to maintain dental health. You need to see the dentist. Yeah, if you, if you, you know, that's a belief and maybe you have to for cleanings and such. Um, that's kind of like a heated topic. But um I think the internal aspect of mineral balance, which is very misunderstood, especially in the natural health community, that K2-7 is so important for dental health, for the integrity of your teeth, um, for, for you know killing pathogenic bacteria using your saliva. That process requires sufficient vitamin K2. Um, and this goes back to everything, every problem you guys messaged me about, right? If, you, if you're dentition is subpar then your whole health will be subpar and depending on which teeth you have an issue with that's going to create an issue in whatever organ and gland it's connected with through that meridian so um yeah i just think the fat soluble vitamins are important but most people focus on on d way too much and the focus should really be on the the a the e and the k and just let nature do its work with D, and you'll be fine. Don't supplement it. And um, yeah, maybe I'll have more episodes on deuterium. I don't know how many people are interested in that, <laughs> but uh, it's kind of quite the rabbit hole. And uh, yeah, let me know what Academy videos you guys want to see as well. Um, I already have some ideas in the works for next month. But yeah, stay cool. Oh, and let me know if you know of a good air conditioner because we don't have one up here and it's like 85 degrees in the house every day. <laughs> so it's been a little harder to think and operate in the heat. Um, but yeah, we have enough off-grid power now and solar power to run run an AC unit. So now I'm just looking for a good one. Uh, interested in understanding blood type, different diet, and why negatives don't do well with meat. Yeah, I mean, that was an interesting theory. Um, I asked Adam Bergstrom about that once on the podcast, and he said there's something to it. Um, but I think he said only AB. Let me see if I could find it in the notes. Uh, search my notes here. I think I might have found it. Darn, no, I didn't. But yeah, I mean, it's, I think some people can do better as vegetarian. Um, vegan's pretty difficult. Um, but I think the key is, is mineral balance. I think the problem with people being plant-based is they're doing NPK fertilizer grown, tap water grown produce. And they don't understand that the vegetables that they're eating are creating severe mineral imbalance in their body because they're grown with a salt-based synthetic NPK, synthetic or organic, both harmful. 
salt-based NPK fertilizer. And um, I actually just watched a YouTube video the other night. We were watching it with the uh, Geoff, uh, sorry, Jeff Lawton. And he has a YouTube channel, Discover Permaculture. Um, and it was, I think it was under, he was talking about NPK and he was talking about like a grocery store and how different aisles are different minerals. And it's really the pH that governs mineral uptake. And it's the same in the soil and the same in our body. And so a big issue is that for me, why I harp on acid rain a lot is that acid rain is 10 to 100 times more acidic. So it'll actually alter, uh, increase or decrease the mineral uptake in the plant. So it'll increase aluminum and iron uptake and decrease magnesium uptake. Even if there's magnesium in the soil, it's not available. And his analogy was the grocery store, the, the pH controls uh, which parts of the store are open, which aisles, which doors are open. Um, and um, same in our body, the pH is governed by minerals. And if our minerals are off, um, then everything's off, right? So it's, it's, it, it's all connected, but, um, yeah, I mean, I would just recommend don't overlook your mineral status. Um, cause I think most people have mineral dysregulation and they just don't realize it. Um, in, you know, even increasing your salt or increasing your magnesium can just have such broad acting effects that initiate the healing process. <clears throat> A negatives also have high hemoglobin levels. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I kind of get in the, the group, the mindset that of epigenetics, like we're not a slave to our genes um, and that we can, we can alter um, their expression through our, you know, through um, basically balancing our environment, the lighting, the magnetism, the water exposure, all of that will affect um, how our genes express themselves. So yeah, kind of my view there, but um, yeah, I think I'm gonna cool down and uh, it's probably approaching mid eighties here in the house. So it's probably even cooler outside with the breeze. But um, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, I think next month it'll be, the live will be earlier than the last day of the month. <laughs> so this was right at the buzzer here. But hope you guys have a great first first week of August. And um, I'll probably start being more active here on, on Instagram. I miss putting up stories and just little epiphanies and thoughts that I have will be um, getting a little more consistent, even if it's just a few times a week or something, sharing like I used to, um, not overly. I've been getting into like digital minimalism, that idea. I think Cal Newport wrote that book. And I think uh, a big part of people's health issues, if they're, they're just checking their phone a million times a day, and that does a number on, on the brain and the nervous system. Um, so yeah, just check your addiction to this thing because it is addictive and it can uh, impede your healing. Julia says, thank you, Matt, for all of your great information. I will see you in a couple months after motorcycle riding season is over. I'm usually unable to see the podcast on the weekends. Love the information. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Um, I always forget to say thank you for tuning in and supporting my work. Um, hopefully it's valuable to you. Hopefully you're, you're connecting dots with the information that I share. Um, and let's keep researching together, sharing information. Tomorrow I'm going to be on a Leo Wicks podcast. Um, so I'm excited about that. I don't think it'll be live. It might be. If it is, I'll share it. Um, but I always, this is my second chat with him. He's hilarious. He's like a comedian. He makes fun of biohackers, which is funny because, uh, sometimes it, it hits home <laughs> stuff that I do, but, uh, I love him and it'll be a lot of fun. 
So, uh, oh, and then I'm going to be on Clubhouse too, August 4th. Um, I hate that app. I think it's retarded, but um, whatever. I, you know, anything to reach more people. And uh, yeah, August 4th, I think I'm doing a Q&A or something on there. So hopefully I can figure that out. I think that's like, one, uh, what time was that at? I'll just give you guys the time now so you can mark it in your calendar. <sighs> Oh, where is it? Here it is. Healthcareheroes.club, August 4th, 6 p.m. PST. Um, yeah, my friend Alana, um, friends with, with that couple quite a while. They went to a lot of my talks back in California. They saw the journey, <laughs> the whole thing. So, yeah, thank you guys. Going to stop ranting. Um, yeah. Be, uh, be sharing more information the month of August. So talk to you guys soon. Thanks so much for all your support.